50 million dollars over 50 luxury and exotic cars dozens of high-end homes and mansions all of this was seized by the federal government during the raid and arrest of a youtuber who was running one of the biggest digital content theft operations in the world this is omi and the hellcat who boasts over 800,000 followers on youtube alone with millions more following him across all the other platforms he made posts showing off his extravagant lifestyle including designer clothes custom jewelry lamborghinis porsches houses and a life that was way out of the realm of any normal or regular youtuber but on the surface omi did his best to make his money look as legit as possible he ran a string of restaurants had a couple of nightclubs and even ran his own clothing business his content included pictures of him in fast and luxury cars photos of his family and even pictures of his kids holding stacks of cash he also posted videos where he would give money away like this one where he gave the pizza guy a thousand dollars i'm gonna give the uh, pizza delivery guy a thousand bucks How much was it? It's uh, 53.90. You're on my, you're on my vlog. Oh, yeah. vlog? Oh, yeah, dude. Yeah. I used to be a piece of delivery driver too, so. There you go. Dude. I can't take this. Nah, no, you're good, man. Trust me. I can't take this. No, you're good, bro. man. Have a great day. Yo, what's your what's your vlog? Is it for uh, YouTube? Yeah, yeah. Omina Hellcat. Oh, you guys subscribe Hellcat? right now. You got your room? Yeah, yeah. no, nah, it's in my car. All right, good, bro. So just room. Oh. My God, thank you, bro. You have a good night, man. You too, man. God. Have a great day. <laughs> I used to drop pizzas. I used to, I used to deliver pizza. That kid right there might become somebody. He was super big in life, and then you know he'll remember this moment. But Omi was a big flexor, and the thousand dollars he gave that pizza guy was light work. He had other videos and clips that he had released that really helped paint a broader picture of how much money he was actually getting. For example, in another video, he showed a check for over a million dollars and claims that it was his earnings from only one week's worth of work. Last month was probably the worst month I've had in the last five years. And this month is already on my second day. We're on July 2nd, right? Yeah. This has been a better month than last month already in one day. Remember I tell you guys that even when things are going bad, good things always come. Look, man, that's a, a little something. And you know what? That, that, was, that was done in a week. That was a week worth of work. Now, it seems like a great message. Work hard, and this is what you can achieve in life. But over time, things just weren't adding up. Omi was, for a lack of better phrasing, too rich for the business he was involved in. I mean, who can just walk on a lot and buy an Aventador with $500,000 like this? Look at that interior. I think I'm too fat to get in this thing. Ah, uh, come on now. You gotta, you gotta just put the steering wheel up and put the seat all the way down. That's all. See how fat people get inside of Lamborghinis. <laughs> oh crap. He did it. I don't know how tall guy is. He's like six something. You gotta reach all the way underneath the all the way. Yeah, there you go. All the way underneath the cow. Go all the way up with it. There you go. Holy crap. That's it. You, I can't get anything that's better than this. It's just like, yo, I wasn't even gonna buy a car. He just happened to call me. This thing is nice looking. Oh, so they don't think that I, uh, that I'm getting a lease or anything. Ow. Wait, wait, wait. This drew a lot of attention towards Omi and his YouTube channel and also raised the question, where did it all come from? How did Omi become so rich? Well, Omi's been charged and convicted in the federal court system and is now serving a five and a half year prison sentence. He's also been ordered to pay a ridiculous amount of restitution to quote unquote, the victims of his scheme. 
Today, we're gonna get to know a little more about Omi and how he went from a street level dealer to a multi-million dollar television streaming pirate. See, everybody wants to ask the question, how do I get to where I wanna go in life? Number one, stop trying to keep up with everybody you see on social media. Everybody you see get money. Half of these dudes don't even have money. Half of them don't even got money. They just pretend. It's a lifestyle. Stop trying to keep up with everybody. Stop going out buying Balenciaga. You know, stop trying to buy everything new that drops, the new iPhone, the new cameras, the new, oh, I need this, this, you know, this coming out. And you see everybody around you getting it. But guess what? Everybody's still living paycheck to paycheck around you, just getting all the new stuff. Like, you have to make a decision and decide on where you want to be in life and where you want to go. Do you want to just live for the moment? Or do you want to get somewhere in life? I made $500, put the $500 back out, invested it into a set of DVDs or doing something, made back $1,000. Put back $1,000, make back $2,500. That's the way you do it. Put your money to work for you. You don't want to be going in to work every single day and working for someone. You want to work for yourself. Stop letting people talk you out of your ideas. Your ideas are great. Your, your ideas are not stupid. Your ideas are incredible. My idea was stupid too. Until now I'm laughing at everybody. What you just seen is the reason why most people actually like Omi. Despite being filthy rich, he always maintained a down-to-earth, humble bragger type of energy. The type of person that can motivate you into believing that you too could become successful in life. And it's a pretty good message, especially considering that Omi wasn't always this well off. He was born on August 6, 1986 and grew up in Philadelphia. Early in life, Omi's dad was a dealer on the streets, according to Omi himself, and his dad ran the whole block. Like my dad's always been like a high ranking person. He ran Philly for a long time. Omi even said that his dad taught him how to whip it in a Pyrex when he was only 12 years old. Even crazier than that is the fact that Omi is one of over 38 siblings just on his father's side. His mom also has six kids, meaning that Omi has 44 siblings in total. And that's wild, bro. Like, can you imagine having 44 brothers and sisters? Anyways, needless to say, Omi followed in his dad's footsteps of being a dealer early on. And after being arrested in his high school years, he dropped out in the 11th grade and continued with his criminal activities well into his adult life. But a few things would happen for Omi that would change his trajectory for forever. One was the fact that he had his son, Omir. Omir was diagnosed with autism and Omi says that this was one of the most pivotal points of his life where he started realizing he needed more than what the streets could offer him. Not only that, he got finessed out of what he said was his last $30,000, really pushing him over the edge to make a change. You lost 30 grand in a bad drug deal? Bro, that was the craziest shit ever. We had, this is back in 2014, July, this is July 4th, 2014. We stood up like three days bagging up for these dudes down in Delaware who wanted to buy some work. And, you know, I already came out of pocket, paid everybody. You know, the work got fronted to me by one of my mans. It seemed like that day, everybody disappeared. There's only me and this one kid. He just walked into the car with all the work. They gave him a taped up, listen to this. They gave him a taped up box. So, okay. so wait, 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 you, you y'all are meeting up with these people. Yeah, so he's meeting up with him, I'm dropping him off. Okay. So he jumps out of my Camaro into, into their car. This brings, <laughs> is it, is it a lot of work? Like how much is it pounds? Is it? I don't even want to talk, it's a lot. That 30K probably is on a low scale, but it was a lot of work. And um, you know, it's everything I had. I didn't have nothing. Your last 30K? That was what I, I had invested, not including what my man put in. Okay. You know what I mean? So he gets out the car with all the work like an idiot, throws it in their back seat. They give him a box with tape on it. So I see them pulling off. I see him get out the car. I see them pulling off. And I said, why is that box taped up? I, I don't know, bro. I, that's how you talk. I, I don't know, bro. I said, open it. He opened it like this. Bro, it was all, and he ran up to the car, bro. It was all newspaper. Oh. All newspaper. 
I get into a high speed chase with these. These was tagging my car. And that's all I could talk about that. I went back home and I'm like, you know what? That's what the fuck I get. Cause I know I'm not a street I'm not a gamer. You know what I'm saying? Like I ain't no bitch either. I'm gonna get it in. But at the end of the day, it's like, that wasn't my lane. That wasn't my calling. So what the fuck am I indulging in this business for? I went back home and I told my girl at the time, I'm like, I would never sell again. I'm done. From here, his endeavors in business were more in line with the world that he was actually familiar with. So he started trying to make money with gaming. Homie would start burning copies of popular games on the blank discs and selling them around for a quick profit, but it wasn't super profitable. So he moved into burning DVDs of movies and selling those because he could make more. They were cheaper and the profit was higher, but eventually DVDs became a thing of the past, which is what led to Omi making some decisions that would end up changing his life. Right there is like 20, I started to get together after 2012. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's when my life, like, you know what? I got a purpose, I'm gonna do something, I gotta figure it out. Cause I, I told you, I had, I had my autistic son. And once I had him, it's a wrap. And so the whole app, the, the app, you know, that you were working on, uh, how did that, how did all that come about though? Um, I explained it already, um, I got into this little altercation where I got robbed. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That's the last time I ever sold drugs. I got robbed on July the 4th, 2014. Mm. And I was like, you know what, f this. I ain't never gonna sell drugs again. Um, I went through a couple months of like depression. A couple weeks later, something popped in my head that said fire stick. Once that fire stick popped in my head, I was like, you know what? I was, I was broke before and, and I sold DVDs. Now I gotta, DVDs are obsolete. Ain't nobody rocking with DVDs no more. I gotta find a way to put digital movies onto a stick. This is where his come up really started at. Omi noticed that his business model of bootlegging DVDs was dying due to the rise of streaming services and digital platforms that offer video on demand. Along with these services came devices that would allow people to access their favorite networks like Hulu and Netflix on their television though. Products like Chromecast and Amazon's Fire Stick you could purchase one of these for around $30 to $40 and then log into your services via Wi-Fi and boom, access to their catalogs were right there. Omi seen an opportunity with these sticks and it didn't take long for him to capitalize. He realized that he could buy these sticks, jailbreak them, preload movies and TV shows onto it, and then resell it for around $140, granting people access to a ton of entertainment for only one low payment. He was able to do this by using an app called Cody. Cody is a platform that users can use to watch movies, TV, play games, and listen to music, like an entertainment hub. However, it's an open source software, which means that literally anybody can use it to develop apps for the Cody platform. And because of that, it's associated with a lot of people who have used it for pirated content. And that's how it started. And back when Cody was popping, you know what I'm saying? I was one of the first ones doing Cody sticks. Yeah. And that's how I started making a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Buying these boxes from Amazon already preloaded and just reselling them for more money. I'll buy them for $50, sell them for $120, $150. Mm -hmm. And that's how I started. The business model worked and Omi saw himself racking up a few thousand dollars a week in profit from the scheme, but loading everything onto these sticks can take a ton of time if you're doing it one at a time. And while a couple thousand a week sounds good to everybody, for Omi, it just wasn't enough to satisfy his craving for more, even though he had just made a million dollars in a year from using this tactic. He needed a more streamlined way of doing business, and he also started to diversify where he was putting his money. He took some of the proceeds from his fire sticks and started up a hosting company called Hosting Bros, which sold gaming servers for some of the most popular games in the world, like Minecraft. I started selling pizza, I did this app for Cody. I started selling Cody, and once I seen that Cody was actually going downhill, and people were taking DMCA takedown notices, and it became a legality issue with movies and stuff, I left it alone. Now I was selling thousands of fire sticks. I'm talking about a lot of fire sticks. And you know what I mean? I, it was during the era where everybody was doing it. And then, you know, I opened up this um, this hosting company, which I loved, like, I sold Minecraft servers, and you know, Minecraft servers, servers for GTA, and that was booming. I made a lot of money off that. You know, they, <laughs> you check the taxes, I'll pay my taxes on that. <laughs> I'll pay my taxes on that. <laughs> yeah, I did. Um, yeah, Hosting Bros is um, the, the name of the company. 
And you know what I mean? Like, just, just off of hosting, web hosting. Who would have known that I could have made that much money off web hosting? Omi kept it moving, though. And while preloading these fire sticks with content was becoming old news, Omi had a new idea. Using Cody, he knew he could hire a developer and streamline his process by making his own app for the Fire Stick that could deliver content for a monthly subscription fee, similar to what you see from subscription networks. He essentially was gonna financially back the idea and pay someone else to make the app. The app was called Gears TV, inspired by one of his favorite video games, Gears of War. Gears TV was Omi's ticket to real wealth. It was his all-in-one entertainment package that had movies, TV shows, and even gave you access to major TV networks like ABC, BET, AMC. Plus, it had international channels from places like Canada and the UK. It even had the NFL Sunday ticket and pay-per-view channels that people could access if they paid for his service. What's crazy is Omi was able to provide this service to people for as little as $15 a month, beating out any actual cable networks by hundreds of dollars a month. This led to a massive boom in subscribers to the service, with it racking up over 100,000 monthly subscribers within the first year. Now, if each person paid the $15, that means that Omi was making about $1.5 million a month from the service, which equals about $18 million a year. Right. So at the beginning, you had no money. No, I had a couple dollars, but it wasn't like, like no major money. I'll, I'll still have 10, 15 bands put away, but it wasn't no money. So how long did, how long did it, did it take for you to start seeing your life changing? A year, I became a millionaire after a year. After a year? After a year. The first year was still okay. 2016, I was okay. 2017, I did good. I made, you know, a couple million. But after like like twenty like twenty seventeen to twenty eighteen is when is when my God. Now are you getting rich by selling fire sticks to people individually nah, people, nah, or nah, somebody nah. buying nah, nah. into you? No, nah, no. Nah. So what happened was not nah, nobody's ever bought into me. What happened was uh I made these apps, I made an app called Gears TV. I don't know if you guys ever heard of it or if you ever watched it anything with with a, with a Gears TV app on it. It was mine. The app sold about a year and a half, two years ago. So. I'm living my regular life, you know what I'm saying? Now I'm making a couple hundred bands every day, every other day. I don't even want, want to get into the specific details how much money I'm making because I'm still fighting this case, yeah. but I'm seeing M's. M's after like, like too many millions. I first called my brother, I'm like, yo, I'm making five bands a week. He said, I ain't making no five bands a week. I said, I swear to God, off these fire stick things. Then, you know, two months later, I'm making 15,000. Then a month later after that, three months later, I'm making 30,000 a week. Then forty thousand a week, then a hundred thousand a week, damn two hundred thousand a week, three hundred thousand a week, four hundred thousand a week. I'm like, what the f am I doing here? You know what I'm saying? Like, you're in Philly at this time. Yeah, I'm, I'm still in Philly. In the hood. In the hood. Living a regular life. In the middle. Are you yeah, bro was raking in the money, but it was about to get a lot better for him. After launching Gears TV and the app becoming super successful, it led to interest from outside investors who wanted to buy into what Omi was building, leading him to striking a deal for $40 million to sell the app. That's because people buying into Gears TV, that Yeah, they're, they're buying, but these people that I sold the app to still have to pay me my bread. Mm -hmm. okay. You get what I'm trying to say? Right. So everything they're making off the app, they gotta, they gotta fork it over. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Cause I was selling the app for 40 M's. For, yeah, so you were selling the app to who for 40 M's? To a couple people. To a couple people? Yeah, to a group. See, the problem is that not everything Omi was doing was 100% above the board. Part of the way he was able to make this all come together was by purchasing actual subscriptions to satellite and cable TV providers like Comcast and Dish Network. Once he had a single active subscription, they would send out a box that kind of controlled the media that was on the box. Now to protect themselves, these providers encoded everything on these boxes, but Omi found a simple solution to the problem. He would purchase decoders for the boxes, download the media, send the media to his own servers, and then broadcast it to his subscribers via the internet. And this was basically the way that he got content for his Gears TV app. And is essentially the reason why he would eventually run into a ton of legal trouble, but you can see how this was so lucrative. 
not only did he have the app to maintain but like i said they also had their own servers and even had a customer service line that his subscribers could call if they ever ran into any issues what made this so successful is that he could offer the same services as the big companies for like one tenth the price normally cable and satellite could cost between like 100 to 200 dollars a month sometimes even more than that but omis was only 15 dollars and it included everything however as time went on upkeep did become more expensive and the cost of Gears TV started to rise, which caused the subscription price to go from 15 to 20 and then 30 and then 40, slowly getting closer to that mainstream pricing that everybody was trying to avoid. Due to, you know, me trying to keep my promises with you guys, like, hey, the prices is never going to change. Hey, guys, it's going to be 15. It was $15 when it was this amount of stuff. And then once it started rising, you know, the bills started rising, it started to get real heavy. All of this added up to about $34 million in subscription fees, according to the government's indictment. After the sale of Gears TV to this group of people that he was talking about, Omi decided he wasn't done with the streaming space and used the money that he made and experience that he had to start development on a new app called Reloaded TV. Now, the service offered basically the same thing as Gears TV did, but it had an upgraded user interface and it worked a lot better. Due to the upgrades, Reloaded TV quickly became one of the most used apps in the IPTV world. Now, Omi also created a YouTube channel with content related to the IPTV world called Caught in 1080p. But after the sale of Gears TV and the development of Reloaded, Omi took down all of his content from the YouTube channel and started to rebrand it to Omi and the Hellcat. Me trying to push a brand like Gears, 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 this, it just grew so big. And you know, the, it, it, I love Gears of War, like it's tatted on me for the rest of my life. But I had to grow from it, you know what I mean? And um, I wanted to do new things that just Gears TV just at the price point i couldn't compete really so you know i got offered something amazing and i took it and it is what it is it's running amazing it's gonna run amazing and um hats off to those guys over there you know they, they still most of them still work with me and um like i said guys uh reloaded tv it is from this day forward i, I removed all my old videos it was a lot of drama i wanted a fresh start it, not trying to fight with nobody and other services. It was just, you know, more of a fresh start. Plus, you know, um, in negotiations with Gears TV, they wasn't trying to pay for those old, like, oh, wait a minute, I got all these other videos that, you know, we could work out with, you know, that's gonna keep the recurring bill. They didn't want to pay me for those, so I took them down. So I let them figure it out. If you look at my page, there's absolutely no videos zero videos. I took everything down, you know, fighting with people and being bipolar and talking you know um incriminating myself and on certain topics it's just super and super and super three years ago what's crazy is omi began his rebranding but never did shy away from the fact that he was in fact pirating content he was pretty much wide open about it at this point set tv got sued basically um from all the all the movies the copyright infringement between the movies and you know, that's one thing you don't mess with Hollywood, man. You don't mess with Netflix. You don't mess with Amazon. You don't mess with Paramount. All those big time companies like that are not gonna allow you to. And, and it's understandable. You, you look at the um, all the all the boxes that were, were being sold by Amazon, right? All the all the major boxes that are being sold, and, and they're running. They were they were created for their streaming services, and you're we're running Cody on it. Well, it's illegal content. However, after the sale of Gears and Reloaded doing this thing, you could tell that Omi was ready for another change. He started to focus more on his own content that he was posting on YouTube and started to move a little smarter, but you could tell that the paranoia was starting to set in a bit. People just assume, they see me, they think they see a gold chain, they think that I'm just some ignorant quack, or that's, you know, it's, that's not the case. I'm very, very articulate and I, and I know what I want out of life. You know what I mean? I know that to keep trajecting myself forward, I can't keep taking steps backwards. I'm not gonna sell no drugs. I'm not gonna, if, if it's potentially land me in jail, I'm not doing it. If friends call me and be like, yo, I need a check, uh, no. I'm not writing you a check, that's called money laundering. I'm not doing any of that quack. 
If it's not legitimate business, then I don't want nothing to do with it. On May 16, 2019, Omi uploaded his first official vlog to YouTube title Payday at Reloaded Construction, and the video started with Omi leaving his mansion, walking past his fleet of luxury and sports cars while talking about being an entrepreneur. For those of you who are not familiar with me, I own a construction company called Reloaded Constructions. I also, in the process of opening a few clubs, sold a lot of my ventures, a lot of the things that I do. So a lot of people are just always wondering, like, what do I do for a living? Started off as an app developer, sold the damned app. Now it's life after that. Now it's like, you know, running my businesses and staying on top of things. Not only that, guys, just showing you guys, not even the business side of my life, but just, you know, the fun side. Jeep, 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 Jeep. I just bought this, the blazer. Kinda sucks, don't tell nobody. From here, he went to a few different nightclubs that he was in the process of opening in the city of Philadelphia. A lot of money went into this place. You say nice, Boom. So yeah, guys, like, you know, this has been always been a dream of mine to open up a nightclub and I finally get the chance to. Not for nothing, this is one of the nicest looking clubs in all of Philly, El Patron. And this first vlog ended with Omi giving his viewers an inspirational message, something that he made a point to do in all of his subsequent videos, pretty much. And one more thing before I go, always remember, live life the way you want to live it. You only get one chance at this, one shot at life, one chance, one shot, that's it. Any mistake that you make, it's done, you're done. So don't let anyone trick you out of your position. His videos instantly started to gain traction on YouTube with his first vlog racking up over 60,000 views in the first three days. Yeah, he started the YouTube mm -hmm. and it just started going crazy. My first video, three days, got 60,000 views. I'm like, how the hell? I don't, no one even knows who I am, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I got 14,000 followers on Instagram at this time. So like no one ever knew who I was. I just released, you know, payday at reloaded. Just me gonna go pay my workers at my club. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Then the next video, bad vlogging day. Then the third video, going by paintball guns. Omi continued to post and make videos about buying expensive clothes, jewelry, cars, houses. And within three months, Omi had amassed over 100,000 subscribers on the platform. A few months after that, and he had over 300,000. But as Omi continued to showcase his lavish lifestyle, people began to wonder how exactly Omi became so wealthy. And it wasn't just his fans who were watching and wondering. He also caught the attention of the FBI. Only six months after Omi uploaded his first vlog to YouTube, the FBI raided his home. They seized around $6 million in cash, dozens of cars, and over 20 separate properties that he owned. The official headlines were that he was being investigated for tax evasion and money laundering. Now, when most people would have been quiet about this, almost as soon as it all happened, he went live on YouTube to tell everybody he was innocent, but surprisingly also made it known that they could be looking into him for other reasons like his whole IPTV scheme. I'm gonna let you guys know exactly. And by the way, the FBI is in here watching right now as we speak. So for people thinking that, that, that I sold drugs, I, I don't sell drugs whatsoever. I don't sell drugs. Um, and you can pretty much Google me who I was before Omi and the Hellcat, which is Omi's always been my real name. Like, you know, but my, my alias, I was Target in 1080p. I was a, I was an app developer for Cody. Yeah, it, it was pretty much IPTV and taxes. And one thing they're trying to hit me with tax evasion and I never really evaded taxes. Bro, when I tell you they took everything, they took every SD card, every camera, um, every television in my house, houses. They took every car. Let me tell you something. Uh, IPTV is a great area. It's a, uh, you know, the copyright acts hasn't been hasn't been updated since the 1960s and you know i hit i hit a gray area and exploited it and they just didn't like it yeah they took they took all my hellcats you know they holy this is harder than what i thought they basically seized millions of dollars out of all my accounts um they took all the cash that i had laying around they took all my jewelry they took all my kids things 
They took Xboxes, they took computers, laptops, cell phones. They, they didn't even leave drones. But like, like I said, like, um, it, it was something important I told you guys a long time ago. You know, you gotta be humble in victory and humble in defeat. And I'm, I'm gonna do a couple years off of this. I know I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to jail for a few years. Uh, I'm gonna take full responsibility for what I did. I'm not gonna talk too much about the things that I've done because it's pretty much incriminating myself. But, you know, one thing they're trying to hit me with is tax evasion and um, money laundering. I've never laundered any money in my life. You know, I have friends who were who are big at the crimes that they did and I never laundered them money. You know, um, I saw a hole in the system and I exploited it and I made a ton of money doing it. So right now they just seized everything. The charges are still pending. They're, they're gonna charge me, you know. I'm gonna go away for a while. That, that's a fact. I felt like nothing that I did was illegal. Um, the Copyright Act states that, you know, you shouldn't, you shouldn't, you know, like it's just basically Hollywood. Hollywood can come after me. I didn't, I didn't sell movies. I wasn't doing that for a profit. I wasn't stealing channels. I wasn't, I, I never stole anything. Um, streaming is totally legal, you know? It's just the way they're trying to word it is a little different, but streaming isn't illegal. Um, it was never live television. It was always delayed television and there's no laws against it. You know, there's no laws against it. While Omi felt like what he was doing was completely legal, the FBI felt much differently about it and they weren't finna let up. After the raid, Omi tried to continue his life as normal buying things, making videos, and traveling, but they were with him every step of the way. In one vlog, Omi even finds out that the FBI had boarded a flight that he was on to the Dominican Republic in order to make sure he wasn't fleeing the country, but Omi continued to try to rebuild and push a positive message to his fans. You all know what's been uh, going on with me. I need you guys to um, please continue to support this channel. I'm gonna stay strong. I'm gonna try to beat this Um I'm gonna try my hardest to get back to the level that where I was at. Um, a lot of my friends turned their backs on me and the same thing will happen to you. Be cautious, learn from my mistakes, learn from everything I'm going through. Learn, learn, learn. Go back to my old videos and listen to what I was saying at the end of those stories because man, they broke me. They broke one of the strongest people I know, which is me. They broke me, they hurt me, they hurt my kids. Um, but no one got me to this position, only but me. Start taking responsibility. And that's something that Omi did from the very beginning of this whole thing, even making appearances on TV to defend itself. I was a multi-millionaire a week ago, and now I'm down to nothing. Carrasquillo maintains that the fortune he's acquired has been through legal means. He owns a construction company and rental properties. And in mid-2016, he launched an internet-based streaming app called Gears TV Reloaded, where users pay a monthly fee to access premium cable, sports, and pay-per-view content. That idea made him a multi-millionaire. He's being penalized for being creative and being innovative. There is no law that says he could not do what he was doing. Cavasquillo is not currently facing any charges, but in August, the Department of Justice shut down two similar streaming apps, announcing charges against eight people for violations of federal copyright law. Two of those defendants pleaded guilty earlier this month, but Carrasquillo says his operation is different. No copyright holders ever got in contact with me and say, hey, you can't do this, because there's there certain ways that I set the business up that's gonna prove a, a million percent that it wasn't illegal. I just saw a loophole. I see counsel on it. They told me it wasn't illegal and I went for it. And now I'm being punished for it. His attorney, Dante Mills, suspects his client is being targeted for being somewhat of an unlikely success story, given his background and where he grew up. They're confused as to how was this guy from North Philadelphia able to create so much wealth? He must be doing something wrong. That's unfair. He shouldn't be treated that way. Carrasquillo admits he does owe back taxes, which he attributes to a lack of financial literacy. He says he was making attempts to pay them before the government seized his assets. In the middle of us trying to work out a deal to pay them back, they came and seized everything. 
I mean, everything, even the tablets off my kids' hands. With liens placed on his properties and his accounts frozen, he says he's unable to operate his businesses or pay his 30 employees. There's car notes. There's, there's a, a ton of families right now going through. Like, they can't even seek legal advice because they're, they're in this situation with me. So, um... This is a bad situation for everyone in the table. So I, you know, I just hope that the, the U.S. attorney can see this and, and come to a resolution. Now, Omi never did deny that he failed to pay his taxes, but claimed that he was willing to pay it. And the reason he didn't was simple. He said that he had hired a certified public accountant or CPA to handle all of his taxes. The problem was that this person wasn't actually a CPA and didn't pay his taxes. That's what he says happens. However, when Omi did get the money he needed to clear the tax debt, he claimed it was stolen from him, allegedly. He posted a video titled, I Got Robbed for a Million Dollars, where he says $920,000 that he was gonna use to make a down payment to pay his taxes with was stolen from him. But a lot of people have been skeptical of this story because I mean, like what a coincidence, right? Like, oh, I owe the government money and I was gonna pay you guys, but it got stole from me. What do you want me to do about it? You know? Anyways, he since removed that video from YouTube, but interviews with Say Cheese still exist where he talks about it. Now, you also recently, um, your house got hit for a million dollars. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you know what's crazy? It was 920 grand, but it was so, so much more than that. It was like jewelry, like, you know what I'm saying? Um, rings, a couple things that were sentimental. But it is what it is, bro. Like you see, when we, when you, me and you talked, I charged that the game from the fat from, from the rip. Ain't no dwelling. Like my the feds done hit me for millions, so like that was nothing. But it, that actually made me realize everybody around me got fired. Now, it, it, yo, I'm telling you, it was like at the right place at the right time. It, it, it was crazy, bro. That that shouldn't have even been here. That was going to my tax attorney. To, to put the down payment down on my taxes. And people are like, oh, that's an insurance fraud. You can't get insurance on cash. Number two is that I can't, that's not a write off because now any cash currency that I had, I can't write that off of my taxes. Say I lost that. It, it's a dub. So that, that benefited me zero, zero. If anything, it made me look kind of weak in a sense. Now, even though the FBI had seized most of Omi's stuff, he wasn't officially charged with anything. They just took his stuff. That was until September of 2021, when the feds raided his properties again, this time unsealing an indictment where Omi was officially being charged with money laundering, copyright infringement, and wire fraud. Giving us any reason. Would you mind holding her to dress so we can talk to her about and explain what's going on? Yes. I want to know what's going on. I don't want to speak to anybody right now. I want to put on my pants and like. Do you want to get dressed? So we have a federal arrest warrant for Omar. We're gonna take him to the Philly FBI office. He's gonna get processed there, and then he'll have his initial court appearance later on today, like midday today. And then that's where the judge will like give him a copy of the charges that are against him and let him know. Okay, are you guys keeping him today or? Well, the the judge is who determines that. The d judge at that hearing will I determine. I thought you guys fine. were going to schedule a court date and everything like this. Like we were told that you guys weren't going to come like this. We were going to have a court date and go forward that way. No, I don't know. Did someone say that yes. or was that assumed? That was said. Well, I'm not. I don't know who That's said that. That's why I'm like. But regardless. We were told you guys would not show up like this again to the house to, to grab him. Like this is why we're like. Yeah, well, we, there's no search. So he's gonna go see that judge today. Mm -hmm. And then that judge will, like I said, give him a copy of the charges. And then also that judge will determine his bail. It's a fraud case, so I, unless there's some stuff that I don't know about. No. Um, he's literally a fucking nerd. Probably... Like, this is like beyond me, like, honestly. Right. Like, I, like, I don't know how much you know about the case, but he's literally a nerd. Like, he sits at home all day, plays with kids. Like, he, and he, I feel like throughout this process, a lot of people have been treating him like he's like this. Super harmful criminal. Just come build me out. I am. You know and call my new lawyer. Because Dante's fired. Yeah, the thing to do is just contact his attorney. No, no, it's cool. Like I've been, we've been, I've been working with two different law firms right. for this day. Hit them with the okie doke. What's the uh, what are their names? Is their attorney you've been dealing with? Yeah. 
I, I gave you one can of my I, terms can, to, just to represent. And then I can I have, um, I have a whole team behind me. Right, take that. What if I don't want to work? <laughs> Somebody said, not in a Malibu. <laughs> Only in the Hellcat? Nah. Okay. Hey, can you, can you roll that up and put a lock on it? Okay. <laughs> oh, you, you, lock on? No, I'm not even doing nothing, bro. <laughs> Somebody get him. This time, Omi's arrest made even bigger headlines, resulting in Omi making another appearance on the news. Now, I actually like Omi's personality, and I get that he wanted to be transparent with everybody about what was happening, but at some point, I think it's better to just not talk, because watch this. So, do, do we mind if we do a quick one? What's going on? So, uh... Sorry, I'm gonna... Yeah, you wanna put that down? Yeah, yeah, I always had one. That's a nice little So, tell me... What happened yesterday? Um, um, yeah, they came, the FBI came in for the first time. You know, the first time you guys came here, everybody said that it was bull crap. Right. So just tell me what happened. None. They just came in. They just they, they ran straight up to the ring, and they put a blue tape on the ring so we couldn't see. But obviously, there's about 30 cameras around the whole premises. So they came back for the things that they alleged that I did. The, cop, the copyright infringement, which, you know, I don't think I ever did anything wrong. Obviously, I was running businesses wide open in, in the public. So now we just got to see. We're going to have our day in court now. So finally, you know, I get to not be depressed, not be stressed out anymore. Now I get my day in court. Was, th was this arrest a relief for you? It was 100 percent a relief because I didn't know what was know what was going on for two years. No answers, no nothing, you know, depressed. You know, a lot of depression comes behind this. They don't know, man, when, when they do things like this, they take people's livelihoods, you know? So this is sort of a big relief for me, I, obviously. You look like you're doing pretty good. <laughs> oh, and look, they said that everything that I've done was criminally. And back again, we're back to flourishing again with other business ventures, which means that, you know, I've always done something right, you know? I just feel like, you know, I found a loophole. I ran through it and I did great. You know, there's other colleagues of mine that are in the same business that I was in. They never got in trouble with the FBI. They're right now, you know, they're getting sued by Direct TV, and the FBI never had any interest in them. And you know, that's my question to them: like, how can my colleagues get to run off of two, three hundred million, and I was the only one targeted out of it? Maybe it's because you know, we were probably driving down the 95, and um, they looked over. You know, they make 70 grand a year. Who the hell is this fat guy driving a Lambo? You said two things in a video. Mm -hmm. You said you're prepared to go to jail. Is that still the case? If 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 uh, the jurors could find that I did anything wrong, because I believe I, I see counsel in this matter, and I actually sat in one of my divorce proceedings, and I sat there and told my lawyer, "Am I doing anything wrong? Because if I am, I'll quit down." He looked at me in my face in front of my ex-wife and said, "Omar, what you're doing is not illegal." So in my heart, and what I felt that I was doing was illegal. No, you know, I, this was wide open. I, I've never hit anything that I've ever done. You know, it's, it's kind of it kind of sucks. Second thing you said in one of your videos, you, you always make money. Uh, what's next for you? Um, opening the biggest brand in the world right now, you know, ReloadedMerch.com. And we're doing fantastic. We have a great group of people to follow us, you know. And I've always been an advocate of positivity. You know, I've never, you, you'll never see me advocate anything other than positivity. So, you know, what happens is supposed to happen. And, you know, God bless everyone. So just to be crystal clear, mm -hmm. the indictment that came down today, you're saying you're completely innocent of those? Um, not completely innocent would be a, a, a false statement. Now, ignorance is no excuse for the law. You know, um, I, I try to go back and forth with a few accountants. And, you know, I found that when they were trying to, like, you know, file my taxes, they were filing them wrong. You know, should I have done a little faster? Of course, 100 percent. But do I think that I that I blatantly just ran away from the law and, and try to evade and try to money? None of that stuff I've ever done, you know, but ignorance is no excuse for the law, you know. So maybe I should have got on, on those on those things a lot faster. But at the end of the day, what I think what I've done, I never did anything wrong. Finally, what do you want to say to all your hundreds of thousands of followers now? Uh, you know, hold tight and, you know, and, and any entrepreneur that's doing anything right now, this this can be you. If you think you're doing the right thing and obviously you're on a great, you know, just always check check with a good lawyer, maybe two or three of them. 
<laughs> that's all I had. You know? Despite his claims of innocence, the federal government is hard to beat when it comes to them trying to prosecute you. And after months and months of back and forth between his legal counsel and the prosecution, Omi decided it was time to plead guilty. This has been such a long journey for me. You know, I'm sorry for all the times I take off of YouTube. It's just, you know, depression, agony. Like, um, sometimes I'm in disbelief that, you know, I, I ended up in the same position as my father. And, you know, I feel like every year that I'm maturing and maturing and becoming a better person and a better person, you know, it, it's a super unfortunate situation. You know, I'm not a threat to society by any means, but, you know, what I did was kind of fucked up, you know? Created an app that basically had live TV and, you know, and basically, you know, recorded shows in the DVR catch up type of thing. So, um, I'm letting you guys know that I'm pleading guilty. Um, long talks with my attorney, and um, it's the best option, you know. Everyone already pleaded out, already pleading guilty on my case. Um, makes no sense. Plus, you know, it, it's an acceptance, it's an acceptance of, of responsibility for me. Um, it just sucks, it sucks, it sucks. It sucks to, to lose my house to lose properties, money, all my cars, you know, my jewelry. It's an embarrassment. Um, and you know what, this is to kind of let you know, man, that you don't want to take easy routes in life. Unfortunately, I didn't pay my taxes. Um, ignorance is no excuse, like I've always said. And it's, it, to me, it's about, you know, accepting responsibility. And, um, and just stop feeding myself some bullshit. Like, you know, it's, it's to me, it's narcissistic behavior that I do. You know, I'm always the victim, always the, everything, everything in America, America's against me. No, like I wouldn't have had this issue if, if I wouldn't have created the service. That's a fact. You know what I mean? That is a fact. I wouldn't have had this issue if I would have paid my taxes. So I would have had less of an issue. And my quote was in front of me the entire time. Life is a marathon. It isn't a sprint. And that, and I've always said that quote, and I didn't follow through with the same I was preaching, you know what I'm saying? Don't ever do things for the quick money or, 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 or the quick monetary gain. Do things for the long haul. Take, take your time on things. Life is a marathon. It isn't a sprint. Now, it was time for Omi to get his sentence. When it came time for recommendations to the judge, three prosecutors said that Omi should be sentenced to over 15 years in prison for his actions. However, when it came time for sentencing, the judge said that giving him that much time for basically copyright infringement would be highly unusual and instead sentenced Omi to 66 months behind bars plus five years of supervised release when he gets out and he was also ordered to pay $16 million in restitution, and he had to forfeit over $30 million in assets, like houses and cars and gas. While most people would have been devastated by this outcome, Omi was actually pretty happy with the way that it all played out. All right, guys, so I've been away from social media for a while, because this is the moment I've been dreading. Uh, facing 27 and a half years, we all know it started at 500. But um, I just got sentenced today. I feel like the judge was super fair. Um, he heard everyone's testimony about my character, everyone who came to court. The judge ordered me uh, to 66 months in federal prison, which um, I feel as though it's fair for especially how, how much money I made. I had to pay uh, 10 point something million in restitution which they already have which will be applied to the to which they already got the money now and i gotta pay another 5.7 million in restitution to the irs so you know i'll be home in the next two to three years i hope you guys continue to uh, support reloaded universe i got 60 days so once again this has been a long time coming 
Uh, I had a seizure done in 2019. I got charged in 2021. You know, the judge was super lenient, but fair, but also didn't want to deter other people from committing the same type of TV piracy that I committed. Um, I was talking everything in detail. I'm coming out with a new YouTube video. Um, it'll only be done by Devin Wade, and uh, we'll talk about it. But it's over. I already know what I'm doing. I know what I'm getting. There's no more stress, no more nothing. I know when I come home, everything will be fine. I'm good. 66 months was super fair. And, um, you know, it sucks for my kids, but I'm happy with it. He could have gave me 15 years if he wanted to. He really could have. He really could have. He could have gave me 15 years. And I guess no one would have questioned him on it. And to the fact that he gave me another chance with my kids, like I said, man, I'm always going to have that man in the back of my mind. And with that, Omi's fate was sealed. At the end of the day, Omi found a way to bypass billion dollar corporations and provide the same service that they had, if not better, for a fraction of the price. In another timeline, he might have been considered an innovator instead of a criminal, but you really have to respect his ability to take responsibility for what he did. He didn't hide from it, he didn't run away from it, and as long as he's happy with the outcome, then that's all that really matters in this story. I'm sure when he gets out, he'll find another way to strike gold again because once you're a hustler, you're always a hustler. And Omi seems like a pretty genuinely good dude, aside from the fact that he was committing copyright infringement. So I think that when he gets out, he's definitely gonna shake back, just hopefully in a more legal manner. Anyways, that's it for the video, guys. If you enjoyed the content, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe, tap the notification bell so you get notified every time I upload a video. As always, it's been fun rocking with y'all, man. I'm out.